My name is Katherine Allen, and this is InterpreTips, where we answer your questions about the interpreting profession. Today will be the first part of a two-part answer to a very important issue raised by a viewer. What to do when the provider or the attorney chooses to bypass our interpreting and speak directly to the client or their witness in their native language, even when they are not proficient enough to express themselves correctly. Today we will answer this question from the legal interpreting perspective. Our question comes from a court interpreter who found herself in a sticky situation when a deposition went wrong. <clears throat> the attorney for a non-English speaking witness had instructed his client to check with him before he answered any question he didn't understand. And he did this in fifth grade Spanish. Then, when the client didn't understand a question that had been interpreted, and it had been interpreted correctly, he turned to his attorney as instructed and asked and said he didn't understand. The attorney chose to answer the question, reinterpret it, using his fifth grade Spanish, instead of using the interpreter who was right there. And the result was that his poor interpretation led the witness to give the exact wrong information, the opposite of what he had intended to give, and this could, have, could potentially impact his case very negatively. Well, this is a common problem for medical and legal and community interpreters in many settings. In court settings, interpreters are often challenged by judges and attorneys who have just enough of the non-English language to challenge the interpreter and think that they've caught them doing something wrong when really they haven't. In this case, we have consulted with the renowned Holly Mickelson, one of the founding figures of the court interpreting profession, and we're very grateful for her input to help us answer this question. The first answer is that the situation shouldn't come up. In high functioning courts where judges and attorneys know the proper role of the interpreter, the interpreter services would have been used to prep this witness for how to properly ask questions and answer questions and communicate in the court setting or in the deposition setting. So it shouldn't have been an issue. But it was an issue because we know that in many rural areas and in areas where court interpreting is still struggling to professionalize, judges and attorneys simply don't understand the proper way to work effectively with interpreters. So in this case, what do you do? The answer is not much because the attorney-client pri attorney privilege trumps almost, m almost all circumstances. However, Holly Mickelson did have one suggestion that might help alert the other parties to the need to be having the interpreter interpreter everything instead of the attorney using their poor Spanish. And she says the interpreter could say, may the interpreter suggest that she be used to interpret consultations between the applicant's attorney and his client to ensure understanding. And then if they don't pick up on what's going on, well, there's not a whole lot else the interpreter can do. And after all, it is an adversarial setting. Well, that's all we have time for today. Tune in next week where we'll, we'll have more tips for how to handle this kind of situation in medical and community settings. Thanks.